Good morning. Welcome to Community United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Rebecca, and uh, today is a special Sunday, as I think you already know, Children and Youth Sunday. So it's going to be an, a, a fun and exciting Sunday as we, a little bit later in the service, will get to watch a presentation by the Sunday school that they have been working on. Um, so one thing I just wanted to mention at the beginning of the service, so one of the fundraisers that the youth had been doing for their mission trip is a silent auction, uh, which did very well, did uh, amazingly. Um, and uh, one of the items that was, was up for bid was my hair color. So I don't know if you can see my hair. I did dye it blue. Um, Gary was the one who won the, the silent auction, but uh, it's in, in certain light you can, you can see it better, but that's what that's all about. And a couple of the other items, kind of uh, silly items that were on the silent auction were uh, winning the ability to uh, throw a pie in certain people's faces. Um, that is going to take place, the plan is to do that outside, uh, weather permitting, after the service. So just, just so you know, that's going to happen if you want to, to witness that. Um, try to head outside after the service. All right. Now let us center ourselves in God's presence and begin our time with a call to worship, which I'll invite Atlas to lead us in. Good morning. Please stand and join me in the call to worship as you're able. Let us remember what our God has done. God Let us remember what our God has done. God made every animal and plant, bird, and fish. Let us remember what our God has done. God created people in the image of God. Let us remember what our God has done. God has made us caretakers of the earth. Let us complete our task in faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing and join me in singing hymn number 145 in the United Methodist Hymnal, verses 1 and 2, Morning Has Broken. seated and I'll invite Mayshel to come forward. Uh, he and I are going to do the Bible reading together. It's a long reading that is 
the story of creation associated with today's Sunday School presentation. So this is Genesis, all of chapter one and through verse two, I mean, through chapter two, verse three, and we will be reading from the voice translation. In the beginning, God created everything, the heavens above and the earth below. Here's what happened. At first, the earth lacked shape <clears throat> and was totally empty. And a dark fog draped over the deep while God's spirit, wind, hovered over the surface of the empty waters. Then there was the voice of God. Let there be light. And light flashed into being. God saw that the light was beautiful and good and he separated the light from the darkness. God named the light day and the darkness night. Evening gave way to morning. That was day one. <clears throat> Let there be a vast expanse in the middle of the waters. Let the waters above part from the waters below. So God parted the waters and formed this expanse, separating the waters above from the waters below. It happened just as God said, and God called the vast expanse sky. Everything, evening gave way to morning. That was day two. Let the waters below the heavens be collected into one place and congregate into one vast sea so that dry land may appear. It happened just as God said. God called the dry land earth and the waters congregated below seas. And God saw that his new creation was beautiful and good. Earth, sprout green vegetation, grow all varieties of seed-bearing plants and all sorts of fruit-bearing trees. It happened just as God said. The earth produced vegetation, seed-bearing plants of all varieties, and fruit-bearing trees of all sorts. And God saw that his new creation was beautiful and good. Evening gave way to morning. This was day three. Lights come out, shine in the vast expanse of heaven's sky, dividing day from night to mark the seasons, days, and years. Lights, warm the earth with your light. It happened just as God said. God fashioned the two great lights, the brighter to mark the course of day, the dimmer to mark the course of night, and the divine needled night with the stars. God set them in heaven's sky to cast warm light on the earth, to rule over the day and night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw his new creation was beautiful and good. Evening gave way to morning. That was day four. Waters swarm with fish and sea creatures. Let birds soar high above the earth in the broad expanse of the sky. So God created huge sea creatures, all the swarm of life in the waters, and every kind and species of flying birds, each able to reproduce its own kind. And God saw that his new creation was beautiful and good. And God spoke this blessing over them. Be fruitful and multiply. Let creatures fill the seas. Let birds reproduce and cover the earth. Evening gave way to morning. This was day five. Earth, generate life. Produce a vast variety of living creatures, domesticated animals, small creeping creatures, and wild animals that roam the earth. It happened just as God said. God made earth creatures in a vast variety of species, wild animals, domesticated animals of all sizes, and small creeping creatures, each able to reproduce its own kind. God saw that his new creation was beautiful and good, and God paused. Now let us, create, let us conceive a new creation, humanity, made in our image, fashioned according to our likeness. And let us grant them authority over all the earth, the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, the domesticated animals and the small creeping creatures on the earth. 
So God did just that. He created humanity in his image, created them male and female. Then God blessed them and gave them this directive. Be fruitful and multiply. Populate the earth. I make you trustees of my estate. So care for my creation and rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and every creature that roams across the earth. The crown of God's creation is a new creature, a creature that can sound the heartbeat of its creator. That creature, made male and female, reflects God's own relational richness. The human family is to join God in the ongoing work of creation. The earth below and the sky above, with all their inhabitants, are too beautiful and too good to be left alone. They need the tender care and close attention that only God's favored creatures can give. Look, I have given you every seed-bearing plant that grows on the earth and every fruit-bearing tree. This will be your food and nourishment. As for the, all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, and every small creeping creature, everything that breathes the breath of life, I have given them every green plant for food. And it happened just as God said. Then God surveyed everything he had made, savoring its beauty and appreciating its goodness. Evening gave way to morning. That was day six. So now you see how the Creator swept into being the spangled heavens, the earth, and all their hosts in six days. On the seventh day, with the canvas of the cosmos completed, God paused from his labor and rested. Thus God blessed day seven and made it special, an open time for pause and restoration a sacred zone of Sabbath keeping. Because God rested from all the work he had done in creation that day. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks to God. God. Please stand and let us join together in the Gloria Patri. seated. Oh, sorry, I didn't change the, I was just so busy singing, I didn't change the words. Okay, you may be seated. Uh, And now we will have the Sunday School presentation, the creation story, and how we can care for it. So invite everyone participating to come forward. Good morning. Today we will get to learn about God's creation through a fun skit. This is a special type of skit called a very impromptu melodrama. Uh, So what this means is the actors uh, didn't have a lot of time to practice before the play and the actors didn't have to memorize lines. The only thing they have to do is be excellent listeners excellent actors, and they will show you what the younger children studied and learned about during this past fall semester when we read about the Bible stories in Genesis. And we also wanted to introduce the element of how we, as our community and congregation, can take care of God's creation for that particular day 
and we wanted to introduce this to all of you in the congregation. So enjoy our presentation of the creation story and how we can care for it. I'll ask all the actors to sit in the front pews right now. God wanted me to read, so. <laughs> Can you imagine a time when there was nothing? Looking around on this day, do you see people? They didn't exist. Do you see the ground under your feet and the sky overhead? Plants, animals, or even water? No, no life, but God's spirit was moving. Now, close your eyes. What do you see? Darkness. On the first day, God commanded, Let there be light. Light! appeared. God was pleased with what he saw. He separated the light from the darkness, naming the light day and the dark night. Now, I'm going to ask our actors to do their impromptu representations of this first day. God liked this and said it was good. Thus, the first day ended. That's a little bit better. Okay. Humans have invented a way to turn darkness into light and the light into dark. But perhaps we have gone too far where light pollution can adversely affect the rhythms of nature. Often, artificial light can disrupt the sleeping patterns of people as well as the migration and reproduction amongst animals. We must be very thoughtful and sensitive to the impact of our actions. On the second day, God commanded, let there be a dome to divide the water and to keep it in two separate places. So the ocean was separated from the sky and the water covered the whole earth. The dome was the sky. I will ask our actors to now represent the second day. God liked this and said it was good. Thus, oops, the second day ended. Did I speak? 
the earth be the earth began with pristine, clear skies. But now some human activities fill the air with smog and pollution. This spoils the beauty and creates serious health risks for people and other life on Earth. We must support ways to promote cleaner energy, reduce waste, and limit toxic byproducts. I'm going to ask our actors to get ready because day three was a busy day. God commanded, let the water below the sky come together in one place so that the land will appear. He called this dry area earth and the waters seas. He was again pleased with what he saw. On the same day he commanded, let the earth produce all kinds of plants, those that bear grain and those that bear fruit. So the earth produced all kinds of plants. Let us see what our actors have to represent on this third day. land and our oceans are going down. <laughs> God was again pleased with what he saw. Thus ended the third day. God provided us with a lush green earth where the land was in balance, but we have destroyed too many of our plants and the imbalance has hurt the quality of our soil, water, and life. It is so important to preserve our natural resources through our national parks by recycling materials and by reducing the overdevelopment of so much land. On day four, God commanded, let lights appear in the sky to separate day from night and to show the time when days, years, and religious festivals begin. These lights will shine in the sky to give light to the earth. It was done. God made the two larger lights, the sun to rule over the day and the moon to rule over the night. He also made the stars. God was pleased with what he saw. I will now ask our actors to come forward to act out what happened on this day. Does Broadway have these same issues <laughs> with their props? <laughs> well. God liked this and called it good. Thus ended the fourth day. God has given us such beautiful and purposeful natural resources. Let us use the gifts of solar power from the sun and the strong movement of the winds to provide us with the energy in a renewable and natural way. On day five, God commanded, let the water be filled 
with many kinds of living beings, and let the air be filled with birds. He created countless creatures to swim about the seas, to dive and swim through the waters with ease. All kinds of creatures, of creatures that live in the water and all kinds of birds. He blessed them all and told the creatures that live in the water to reproduce and to fill the sea. And he told the birds to increase in number. What actions do our actors have to show us for this day? And God was pleased with what he saw. Thus ended the fifth day. The sea is a rich and beautiful home for so much life. God, God designed a delicate balance that sustains our ocean animals and plants. But some human actions have hurt these systems through overfishing and polluting. We must work hard to clean up our waters and to balance the taking of these resources. Day six was busy too. God commanded, let the earth produce all kinds of animal life, domestic and wild, large and small, and it was done. Once again, God was pleased with what he had saw. On this same day, he commanded, and now we will make human beings they will be like us and resemble us. They will have power over the fish, the birds, and all animals, domestic and wild, large and small. So God created people in his own image, telling them to have many children that would spread all over the world. God told them, I am putting you in charge of the fish, the birds, and all the wild animals. Now this should be an interesting and busy day. Let us see what our actors have for us. everything he had created, and he was pleased with what he saw. Thus ended the sixth day. Now God had created an amazingly diverse array of animal life. And then, lastly, she created humans, not to reign as masters over this beautiful earth, but to live in harmony with it as stewards, protectors, and as God's own hands in the caretaking of this incredible gift of love and responsibility. On the seventh day, God looked over all the creations of the land, the water animals, the plants, and he was pleased. On the final day, God rested. He looked at his creation, blessed it, and made it holy. Or should I say, the beginning?
you so much for the wonderful presentation about creation. While, while they put away all of these props, I'll invite you to join with me in singing All Things Bright and Beautiful, number 147 in the United Methodist Hymnal. We'll sing verses one and three. Please stand as you're able. Be seated. So normally on Children and Youth Sunday, we have a Bible presentation. If there are any children who are in uh, second grade, then we present them with their first regular full Bible. Um, but we don't have any youth in that age category this year. Um, so I wanted to add something else to this Bible presentation time, which is when we have uh, families with children who are younger than second grade, to give them a special Bible storybook. And the one, the one that I have to present is called Celebrate Wonder Bible Storybook. It's a really nice one, and it's one that they're using in the Sunday school class. So um, we have a couple of families with younger kids, the Clark family and the Castle family. I don't think the Castles are here with us today, but would a representative of the Clark family please come forward to receive this? <laughs> there you go, I give this to you on behalf of the church, a special Bible storybook for you. <laughs> I know, I know. I know, you, you already have a, a regular uh, Bible, don't you, Abby? But your sister doesn't yet. But I don't want anyone to feel left out, so if there's any, anyone, any other family who has older kids and they would like one of those special Bible storybooks, just let me know, I'll get you one. Next, we are going to recognize some of our graduates, um, some people who are members of this church, and I know I have at least one person uh, up here who is a grandson of the Richardsons. And if anybody else has a graduate that they would like to, to recognize, uh, you'll, you, can, you can do that uh, and let us know what graduate you have in your family that you'd like to recognize. So first, um, we have Fernanda Sattler Rosa, uh, who just graduated from Martha's Vineyard Regional High School. And uh, Fernanda is going to be attending the University of Connecticut after taking a gap year. She's planning on majoring in philosophy with an intent of attending law school. So that's a little update on Fernanda, and we wish her congratulations. 
Donnie Braley just graduated from Keefe Regional Technical High School. And he has, he did so well in the internship that he was doing that they wanted to hire him right away. So he already has a job. And so we wish Donnie very well uh, in, in his future and we congratulate him. Oh yeah, let's clap for each of them. Prentice Richardson graduated cum laude from Siena College with a BA in economics and political science and was recognized as an honors fellow. The son of Nancy and Bill Richardson and grandson of George and Susan Richardson, Prentice is currently employed at Bridgewater State University. So the proud grandparents give, uh, give us this. <laughs> And the last one that I have to mention, uh, that I have to mention is going to be Atlas. But before I talk about Atlas, I want to see if anyone else has any other, uh, any other graduates that they'd like to celebrate in your families or friends. <laughs> OK. Well, we congratulate all of, all of those who have graduated from high school or college or whatever program they might have graduated from. Um, so next, I am going to mention Atlas Turrell, who graduated from Natick High School. And uh, one exciting thing uh, about Atlas is that Atlas received the Leonard Bernstein Musicianship Award. And uh, so congratulations on that. <laughs> And Atlas is going to be attending the University of Auckland in New Zealand and pursuing a Bachelor of Science. Um, the good thing for us is that the school starts a little bit later, so Atlas is going to be going sometime around February, so we have a little bit more time together, uh, which is fortunate. And while we're talking about Atlas, we have a special scholarship presentation, the Brown Sadler Scholarship. And so I'd like to invite Atlas to please come forward, as well as Gary to make that presentation. <laughs> I don't need a microphone. <laughs> it's my job. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Well, this is indeed an honor, the opportunity to be here with Atlas, who has been with us forever, it seems like, <laughs> from a, a young child up to the moment. And we couldn't be prouder of all that sh they have given to this congregation, to this community. And I am just so pleased to be by her side. And, and they were willing to let me actually read for them and for you their application for this scholarship. Um, shall we read what Atlas submitted yes, first? Please. Atlas wrote on, her on their application um, words that really touched me deeply and um, they're for you. And they reflect all that you have given them and I think what they have given us through these years. Atlas wrote, I started attending CUMC in 2010 when I was four. Over the last 14 years, this congregation has been a huge part of my life, watching me grow. When I was 11, Jill stepped down from her position coordinating children's messages. No one else really wanted to do it. So Pastor Ted let me do it. And I was quite possibly the most persistent children's message coordinator. I remember that well. <laughs> I, I don't think Dave's done the children's message. <laughs> About a year ago, uh, Jill stepped down from being the church's family promise coordinator. And again, no one else seemed all too eager to do it. 
After a few weeks of thinking about how important family promise is and how someone should certainly do it, I realized I could do it myself. The chance to have such responsibility is not something I would have been able to experience at school at such a young age. This congregation has trusted me, allowing me to grow and gain invaluable skills and knowledge. Additionally, you all trust me to run the Zoom service every week. <laughs> People in this congregation have been mentors and role models as I have grown. Through Dave, you have all supported me as a musician. Some people from church have also come to my band concerts and other big events in my life to support me, which has been lovely, especially with all of my extended family so far away. I have learned about many of the adults here, hearing about your lives and learning from you. The church is truly a community of people who have been here for me, as I have grown into the person that I am now. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Atlas. Do you want to say anything? Sorry, Jill. The, the speech kind of did turn into a roast of Jill. Sorry. Sorry Jill. <laughs> but yes, thank you, everyone. I really enjoyed growing up in this church. Well, we are, we are happy to provide this scholarship to you. It's in the amount of $500, and I'm, we, talk about trust. <laughs> we know you will spend it wisely, and we're so happy to be able to contribute to your future in another way. Thanks, Alice. I'll invite Gary not to go too far. Well, he's the worship leader anyway, so he's not going to go too far. Uh, but we're going to next to have, uh, we just want to recognize the Sunday school teachers. And so I'd just like to invite Gary and Christine and Ginger and, and is VG is downstairs. OK. Uh, but we'll think about VG as well. So if I could have uh, Ginger and Christine up here as well, that would be Wonderful. And I wore the shirt in case you didn't Yes, yeah, I did notice a great, great teacher's shirt. Uh, so, uh, Gary and Christine have been the co chairpersons of the Christian Education Committee as well as teachers. And Ginger, of course, has continued in the role of the Sunday school teacher for the younger children. And VG has been. Uh, VG was hired as nursery care, and so she is now having a wonderful opportunity to provide nursery care now that we have some younger kids, but VG has also always been wonderful with stepping in wherever she is needed and helping out with the Sunday school. So we're going to make sure to give her a card as well. But I just, on behalf of the congregation, would like to present these to to Christine and Ginger and to Gary as a thank you for all of your hard work. And Children and Youth Sunday is always one of those times that we get to you know, see the kids up front and, and think about all that they've been doing throughout the year, all the ways that they've been teaching our children. But we know it's happening throughout, throughout the year, not only on the Sunday. So um, I'd just like to thank them. And before we give them a round of applause, I'm just going to invite anyone who has been a helper, I know there have been a lot of Sunday school helpers, to just stand where you are so we can recognize you as well. So anybody who has helped out with the Sunday school, please just stand where you are. I know there's lots of you. And let's give all of them a round of applause. Thank you. So thank you to all of you, and, and thank you to you for everything that you have done. It is so special and so meaningful, and thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
It is now time in our service for us to share joys, concerns, and to witness how we have seen God acting in our lives. Uh, let me just mention a couple of firsts. One was, um, one is that throughout this past year, we have had a Girl Scout troop. I, didn't, I don't know if you know of all of the groups that meet in our church. One is a Girl Scout troop, a sixth grade Girl Scout troop who's been meeting. In, in our church, and they have really appreciated. We let them use the space uh, without, without any kind of fee, and they really appreciated it. And they gave us a, a check for $75 as a thank you, so that went in the offering plate. And this is a note from them. Thank you to Sarah in the office, uh, Rebecca, and Community UMC for your hospitality towards our Girl Scout troop this year. We appreciate your help in providing a great space for our girls to work. Jen and Heather Troop, 84326 uh, Wayland Girl Scouts. So I just wanted to share that with all of you. And um, you know, just just a note about like how there are there are so many different groups meeting in our in our space, and and so even we don't see all of those groups sometimes, but it really can make an impact. And I actually had somebody mention to me um, just the other day. That, that they were in recovery and that they had just recently attended, they were just in town uh, visiting and they attended the AA meeting that's at our church on Friday evening. So that was just another reminder of like how meaningful um, the other groups are that are in our space. All right, um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that yesterday we had a great day at the church. Many of you were there. Uh, we had a wonderful ice cream party, which was so much fun, and thank you to all of the people who, um, who put that together. Uh, thank you to Allison for putting together a wonderful balloon arch that just happened to fall apart and fly away, <laughs> which was very exciting. It was, it was a very exciting time, but, um, but very unfortunate for, for those who spent a lot of time putting it together. Uh, but we had a great time. We had so many community members uh, come, come through, enjoy free ice cream, games, just socializing. So it was a great time. And thank you so much to everyone who helped out with that. And there was something else going on yesterday, too. Maybe Gary can mention that one. I'm recognizing a lot of faces from yesterday. I saw you through your windshields when we had the car wash event yesterday. This was a fundraiser for the youth mission trip. And I have to say, I think it was a smashing success. I hope you had fun if you drove through. I know the kids that worked at the car wash yesterday were just working hard, playing hard, and I think we had a great time. I do want to just mention, because folks put long hours in, especially our youth. That's a long work day. I want to thank Alex and Evelyn, and Adam, and Maddie, who is a good friend of our community and a good friend of Evelyn's, who's going on the mission trip as well. We had... And a Atlas was... Atlas, Atlas was absolutely. Happy. Jill was very helpful, thank you. Rod, Rod was a superstar and a bit of a taskmaster behind us all. He kept us going and uh, did an amazing job. Did I forget any of the other youth? And I was there. Gary was there <laughs> all day. <laughs> and I also want to thank the community outreach who did such a thoughtful arranging of having the ice cream party the same time as our car wash. So there were a number of customers that drove through, got cleaned up, wrapped around, and ate ice cream. And I just hope they didn't drip it on the cars after they did that. <laughs> but it was a wonderful day. I do want you to know we considered it highly successful. We had over 30 cars washed. And money seems to still be kind of rolling in. We are now at a grand total of $575. <laughs> so thank you so much. This is a big support for this mission trip. In July, we're going to be going up to Salem, Maine, and the United Methodist Economic Ministry will be serving the rural communities up there, doing home repairs, 
um, working in the food pantry, the thrift store, and you have made this possible with your generosity throughout the fundraisers and through this season. So thank you so much. Thank you. Are there other, any other joys or concerns or uh, witnesses? Yes. June is a lot of things. It's graduation month, it's Juneteenth is in, in this month, and it's also Pride Month. And I lift up a prayer request for all of our LGBTQ children, siblings, neighbors, coworkers, family members, community members, that they know God loves them, we love them, we welcome them. Please, let's pray for them. Thank you. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Hi, so my friend Mary had the MRI Friday, so she should be getting results this week as to the next steps in her breast cancer uh, for, you know, path. So good prayers for Mary and that she gets a good result in the MRI. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gary was very gracious in thanking everybody for helping in the car wash yesterday. But without Gary's putting it together, it never would have come about. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> yeah, great job, Gary. I, I was especially impressed with his sign work. He, he made so many signs that people could see on Main Street, you know, pointing in the direction of the car wash and, and a sign at the end uh, saying, thank you and God loves you, I think. It was really nice. Good morning. Um, I would just like to ask for prayers for my uncle. He's um, not doing too well. He is better, but he had to go into the hospital and with his hospice team. So he um, is home now, but he did take a fall. So if you could please um, say a prayer for Herbert, my mother's brother. Thank you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Right. Not seeing any others. Then um, before I go into, oh, I'm sorry, Steve. Okay, <laughs> Steve. Nice to have you here today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I, I have to do that because of the fact that I do it every Sunday morning. But uh, it is a joy to be with my ch home church family once more. I don't get very often to be here, to be Alex's dad and uh, Lisa's husband and Rod's son. But uh, I bring you greetings on behalf of your brothers and sisters in Christ at the Crossroads United Methodist Church in Sanford, Maine, and the Berwick United Methodist Church in Berwick, Maine. For those of you who don't know where they are, Berwick is 85 miles from here, and, and Sanford is 105 miles from here. And that's where I usually serve on Sunday mornings, and they send you their greetings. Thank you, Pastor Steve. <laughs> All right, so um, before I say a prayer, uh, another thing that I would like to do this morning is I, I'd like to invite any of the youth who are going to a United Methodist camp this summer to come forward so that, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but you can just, you can just come and sit down here. I'm not going to make you say anything, but I just want the congregation, come on, I know there's a couple girls back there who are going to church, Evelyn, Karina, come on, come up. Um, so, the names of the, the kids who I know, yeah, you can just sit there, who are attending camp, Abby and Will Vimula, Evelyn, Karina, and Sean Cho. Girls, come up. No, no, sit down here, I'm saying. Not there. 
And Abby and Olivia Clark are going to be going for the first time. Very exciting. So something that this church does, which is very special, is that the trustees are providing a $500 scholarship, enough for a full week of camp, to any child of this church who registers for a United Methodist camp. Um, so thank you so much to those who have donated. <laughs> they're, they're ready for a blessing. OK. All right, that's good. Um, Great. Okay. So thank you to those of you who have contributed and, and please continue to contribute to this fund. If you ever want to make a donation for camperships, just write camperships and that money will be earmarked to help send kids to camp. And, uh, and this is also just uh, to let, you know, any of the other kids know that this is a possibility for them to go to a United Methodist camp. They're already, they're down there ready for a blessing. So I'm going to go say a blessing for them and then here. This is this was unexpected. Okay. <laughs> I know. All right. Let us all bless bless these children. Lord, we bless each of these uh, precious and wonderful children, and we pray that they will have a special and meaningful time at camp. We pray that camp will be for them a time to uh, be in your creation, to appreciate your creation and to, to make friends, to do wonderful activities, and to feel closer to you. So bless them in their camp experience. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you so much for coming up. You can go back to your seats. And, and let, let me continue to pray. Eternal God, your spirit moved on the waters and there was light, your first creation. Your spirit moved on the water at our baptism and again there was light in our souls and hearts. Let your holy light shine on us today as we remember your creation and our special part in it. And I invite you to join with me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the uh, skit from our kids this morning, because that's the kind of entertainment your pledge gets you. <laughs> In all seriousness, with our focus today on our children, please be mindful and aware that the tithes and offerings you give to this church are very integral to supporting our children's missions, um, both in educating in them, to enjoying their company, but to also reaching out and supporting children, not just in our community, but through our mission shares and other mission work, children in Family Promise, children that come to our soup kitchen, children all around benefit from your generosity through this church. So thank you for that. And we encourage you to continue to give to Community United Methodist Church. You can donate online or pledge online. You can also leave an offering here each Sunday in the, in the baskets. So thanks for that, and just know that that really translates into love and support for our children and our parishioners of, of the future. Um, thank you for that, and let us now please stand for our doxology.
Let us lift up our voices in gratitude and celebration and our prayer of dedication. Loving God, we thank you for all of the gifts that you have given to us. We pray that you would bless our gifts and offerings, that they may be used to share your love with other people. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. I've got a few announcements to share with you. The Staff Parish Relations Committee has a meeting scheduled for Wednesday, June 12th at 6 p.m. Uh, next Sunday for Father's Day, we are going to have a special guest violinist um, for some special music, so that's something to look forward to. And uh, Stewardship and Finance will also be meeting next Sunday after church. And just to let you know that the annual conference of the United Methodist Church is coming up from June 19th to 22nd, um, so that I'll be away in Danvers at, at that. And then the following Sunday, I will bring back a report for you. Are there other announcements to share? I think Deb is making her way over here for an announcement. So um, today is like the last day to, well, really Wednesday's the last day to turn your slips in for the Tools of Hope. I'll be downstairs for a short while at the church today if you want to turn anything in. And uh, Friday Soup Kitchen, uh, like we'll be preparing food at noon. Great, thank you. I'll just also announce to the kids that I do have some little goodie bags for, for you that you can pick up right after I give the benediction. You can come up here. Yeah. Um, these are my last words, I think, this morning, so. <laughs> <laughs> Make them good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, listen up. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to mention that we are now in the process of planning uh, summer school summer Sunday program for our youth in, in the education. And you saw firsthand today at the car wash just what an enthusiastic, hardworking group of youngsters we have. And it's one of our goals to have our congregation get to know these children a little better and have our children get to know you a little bit better. And we would very much like to have a program this summer where we have some of the adults from the congregation attend one of our Sunday school classes and collaborate with a facilitator. You will, I can guarantee you, you'll always have a teacher in the room. But what I'd like to do is over the next couple of weeks, identify eight to 10 adults that that adult, any volunteer, would just take one Sunday this summer, that's all, but to join us in our class and to have an opportunity to share a little bit of your own life story, maybe your faith history, and any inspirational brief story you might want to share with our children, as well as read them, perhaps a scripture reading or another account or a story that, of your choosing or something that we can provide as the teachers. We would love to have that opportunity. You are so supportive of our youth as it is, but really pause and think, how well do you know some of the kids? And wouldn't it be sweet to get to know them just a little bit better? And I know it would mean a lot to them to get to know you better by name, by history, and who knows? You could buddy up and you guys could hang out together outside of Sunday school sometimes. So please just think about that. Christine, Ginger, and I would be the facilitators this summer, and we will be looking to have you, if you'd like to step forward, just give us your name, and we'll work out a schedule that works well for you. Again, we're just asking one Sunday from some of the adults that would like to come down and join us for that, that Sunday school session. We'll give you a little more details if you reach out and connect to us, and we would be so pleased to facilitate that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let us join together in our closing hymn. Please stand as you are able, and we'll sing verse one of Let All Things Now Living in the small black hymnal, The Faith We Sing, number 2008. <laughs>
Let us prepare to go forth this day, remembering all of God's good creation and considering how we can be faithful stewards of all that God has given to us. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.